Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Provença and today we're going to talk about problem set for Bitcoin price index of CS15 introduction to programming with Python. If you have any question about programming or the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link's in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have another view about the problem. We totally disencourage plagiarism. So for this problem, what are we gonna do? We're going to get how much the user want to know about, let's see here, we want to know how, uh, what is the price for one Bitcoin? And we're going to say to the user, what is the price? All right. And, and here again, if we want 1.5, it's another value. So we're going to do this calculation. We're going to get the current, the current value of Bitcoin and we're going to multiply it by the number that we want to know. Okay. Some things that are important to understand in here. We're going to receive the number that the user want to know about the price of Bitcoin using the command line. Okay. Do you see in here? We're not going to use the input function. And we have to find a way of getting the value of the current price of Bitcoin and do this multiplication. Okay? But let's do step by step in here, don't worry. I already did here the pseudocode, so basically we need to get values from the command line, actually the value only, and then get the current price of Bitcoin as a float and print with the value of the command line. So we need to get the value of command line, then we need to get the value of Bitcoin and multiply by this value of the command line. All right? So before we start, let's understand how the sys library works, and this will help us a lot to get things from the command line. The sys library in Python provides various functions and variables that are used to manipulate different parts of the Python runtime environment, specifically command line arguments. Command line arguments are those which are passed during the calling of the program, along with the calling statement. To achieve this using the sys module, the sys module provides a variable called sys.argv. Let's see this example. Let's suppose we have a file called test.py that looks like this. Import sys, so we're importing the module sys and we're doing print sys.argv. If we run test.py in terminal doing python test.py red, green, and blue, we can see that sys.argv is a list of command line arguments. So we're printing the list test.py, the first element, the second element red, the third element green, and the fourth element blue. If we try to print the length of sys.argv like the code above, so we're using the same file test.py, import sys, and we're doing print length sys.argv. If we run the terminal again doing python test.py red, green, and blue, we will see that length sys.argv provides the number of command line arguments, so we print the number 4. Finally, if we want to print the first element of our sys.argv list, we can do, again, the same file test.py, we're importing the sys module and we're printing sys.argv on position 0. If we run test.py in terminal doing again python test.py red, green, blue, then we check that sys.argv0 is the name of the current python script, which is test.py. So like we saw in the animation here, we can use the sys library to get things in from our command line and they will be stored as a list in the sys.argv, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do in here is import the sys library, okay? And then we're going to get the value from the command line. All right, we know that we can use the sysargv, so we can already start implementing here the logic. What are we expecting to receive? We are expecting to receive one number, all right? So we are expecting to receive at least two elements in our list, the name of the file and a number, all right? So the first checking we're gonna do is we're gonna check if we are receiving two elements in our command line. Right, because if we're not, like in this first case, we're gonna print missing command line argument. All right, so this is the first checking. So if length of sys.argv is equals equals to true, we're going to continue. I'm going to do here pass right now, but later on we're gonna work. And the else case, we're going to print this missing command line argument. All right, we're gonna print this in here. And one thing that is important that CS50 tell us is to exit the code, all right? So uh, we should exit the code if we don't receive the number, okay? So how can we exit the code? 
the sys library there has one function that exit the code and we don't see the rest of what exists in our code right so if the user doesn't pass for us a number we're not gonna continue our code and we're gonna stop in here so we can do sys.exit and you should put a number inside in my case i'm gonna put the number one all right so this is the first I put the L's in the wrong place, but this is the first thing we have to do, okay? The checking if we are receiving the, the length of RDV. So let's test. If I do python bitcoin.py, I'm gonna receive this message, missing command line argument and we stop the code. But if I pass something else, the number one, we're not printing anything because we didn't add the logic in here, all right? Now we need to check if the user is giving us a number. All right, because it can be an integer or a float, all right? Because if the user gives us a cat, for example, we can't multiply the value of Bitcoin by cat. This doesn't mean anything. So we're going to use try and accept to check if the user is giving us the correct command line or not. All right, so to do this, let's understand how exceptions work. So basically here, I'm using W3Schools as a really good resource if you have any question about programming, like understanding how a function works or what you, you can use in your code, okay? And basically the try block lets you test a block of code for errors and the accept block lets you handle the error, okay? Let's see this example. For example, let's suppose we have this code, try print x except we're gonna print an exception occurred. The try block will generate an exception because x is not defined. Then we're going to print an exception occurred. Let's see another example. In this code, we will try to print the division of 10 by 0, but we know from math that we can't have any division by 0. Then our code will go to accept and we will print an exception occurred. So now that we understood how try and accept work, let's apply in here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to try to convert the command line on position one. So this element here, the number one, or the cat, if we can convert this into a float. If we can't, we're going to the accept block and we're gonna prompt a message. This message here, command line argument is not a number and we should use sys.exit, okay? So in our try, we're gonna make, I'm gonna make here a variable called value and I'm gonna store the float of sys.argv on position one. All right. Remember that position zero is the first element, that is the name of our file, and the element on position one is the second argument that we are receiving. If we're not able to do this conversion, we're going to the accept block, and we're going to print this message here that they are expecting us to print. Command line is not a number, okay? And remember to exit our code. So here I'm exiting, okay? So let's check what is happening. If we run python bitcoin.py space cat, cat will be the element on position one here in our RGV. And this will give us this error, command line argument is not a number. But what if I put here 1.5? 1.5 is a number, it's a float. So this shouldn't give us any message and it's not giving, all right? So the first part of the problem we already done. Now we need to get the current price of Bitcoin as a float, all right? And then we're gonna convert this price with the value that we want. So to do this, we're going to use this part here of CS50. Query the API for the Coindesk Bitcoin price index. So we're gonna use this link in here, which returns a JSON object among walls. Nested keys is the current price of Bitcoin as a float. Be sure to get any exception as the code like this. We're gonna see this exception part in one second but basically what are we gonna do if you take a look in here we're going to use this request library all right and we're going to get here we're going to receive something from this library all right but before we understand how this works let's understand how how importing libraries work if you want to use a set of functions in your application from a library you can use the import keyword this way you can get access to code from another library and use it in your own file for example, if we want to print the correct value of pi, we can import the math library into our code. Then we can use the pi method of the math library to print it. 
So we're going to do import math in the first line and in the second line we're going to do print math.py and then the output will be the number of pi, 3.15, so on and so forth. So now that we saw how can we import libraries and using our code, let's start applying using the hints of CS50, alright? So the first thing we're going to use this pips install request and we're going to add in our terminal, alright, pip install requests and it's not gonna appear anything it's going to appear a requirement already satisfied because i already installed in my code so in your case if you don't have this so far it's going to appear some message displaying that it's downloading all right now let's see the next part so note that the request modules comes with a quite with quite a few 